boom. Can you see how the car goes into two um, two wheels and stays there for a moment? Let's have a look again. Look at this. Jump and stays there and then absorbs. Let's see it also on the next curbs here. Boom. Look at the eye, uh, how it absorbs the curb. And boom again. And then great control of the oversteer. So what is happening here? We have a new camber simulation, right? Uh, we've improved on the previous camber simulation we had and we went an extra step forward and all over. So the one of the things that we improved is how the camber uh, generates uh, grip. We already had a very good generation of grip for negative camber, but as the camber was going to more and more and more uh, positive values, it would lose more and more and more grip. Uh, the rate of loss of grip for positive camber was way too much. Uh, it wasn't a big deal because you, I mean, the, the situations where you go on to into uh, two wheeling like that are minimal when racing, but still it wasn't correct, uh, and we had to do something about it. Uh, so now we have a much better gradient of how the tires are losing grip uh, as they are um, as they are going into positive camber, and that improves not only the uh, as you can see here, right? Uh, it doesn't improve just the spectacle of the car going into two wheels and staying there for a moment and with you know cars with even higher COG you could even get really close to you know 40 degrees or something uh, but I mean look at how how natural it is it's amazing wow, wow look at this I love it <laughs> so uh, it doesn't improve just that but also improves uh, other extreme situations so for example when the tire goes over a curb that is pretty high this changes a lot the camber uh, of the tire uh, to the surface because obviously the camber is negative to a flat surface but then if the surface is not flat anymore and horizontal the whole camber changes uh, it changes also how the internal wheel generates grip because the internal wheel obviously if you have something like you know, uh, minus three negative camber, you have it for the external wheel. The internal wheel automatically, it's minus three, but because you are turning into this side, it becomes positive camber for that side, right? And it becomes positive side, positive value like minus, uh, sorry, positive three or positive four degrees. And now uh, it generates more, more traction, even if it's in, in uh, positive camber values. Um, and uh, um, that means that, you know, over the curbs they behave better, um, it gives you more traction, uh, it makes the car jump and stay on two wheels even more. And while we were there, we said, okay, let's push it even farther, and now we have a much better simulation from the values um, in terms of what kind of side uh, forces uh, and realignment forces the tires generate from extreme camber values okay now what 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 i mean by this let's change car once more go to an interesting track that will permit us to showcase this and have a go so when you have extremely fat, <laughs> very wide, slick tires, right? Um, and you give on those slick tires lots of negative, lots of camber, positive or negative. It's obvious that those guys are going to generate a lot of lateral force, you know, uh, even if you're going straight, okay? And now imagine this happening at minus 3.5 or minus 4 degrees of, uh, of camber, okay. Uh, but imagine 
going into a curve where for a moment you have the curve that it is like this and you get even more negative camber or the curve is a step and so half the tire is over there and half the tire is under the, the curb and half the tire is over the curb. Or imagine, uh, I don't know, let's get the, the Porsche, the Ferrari, for example. Uh, imagine uh, having a longitudinal bump into the road, for example, okay? Um, so what is going to happen is when you're going over this kind of, of curbs, uh, the tire will want to follow uh, if they are longitudinal, they will want to follow uh, the the bump or the curb or the line, whatever, and they, they will want to follow it and not going instantly over that. Uh, it's easy to think about it if you ever guys, you know, as kids went around with your bicycles and you would go close to, uh, I don't know, the walkway, right? Now, if you go parallel to the walkway, the, obviously, the, um, the wheel of the bicycle will want to go straight while we will go, to go left or right and you will want to fall over because the bicycle will follow the um, side, side walk, right? Um, if you go not parallel but in a great angle, then you can go over it, okay? Uh, so... All this stuff happens when you have to deal with parallel and longitudinal uh, bumps uh, and curbs and whatever of the road. Okay, so let's go and get the aggressive setup. Use as much negative camber as we can here and have a go. As you know, Mizano has some... It might not be very high, the, cam the, the curbs, but they are stepped and they are a little bit strained. So. Let's have a go. Look at this. Look, you can see the whole car moving around like that. It's not just the force feedback, but the whole car wants to change direction. And the tires are not even hot yet, so they don't even generate as much, uh, you know, grip as they can. Oh, look at this. You, you can already see how the car tries to follow those high curbs when you are longitudinal with them. You attack the, the curbs, you know, uh, not parallel and you don't have big issues. Yes, you will feel movements and everything, but you, don't, you won't have big issues. You going over the curbs longitudinally and the problem starts. And of course, the higher the curb, the worse it is, like this here, for example. Oh, you can see how it moves around. Look at this. Ah, <laughs> see how it moves. So, usually aliens, they will still do it. They try to break as wide as they can over there to gain more, more uh, space. They will still do it, but you can see that it's not as easy anymore because the car moves around much more. Look at this. So this is called tram lining. This is the correct term. Tram lining so that you follow the lines of tram, you know, or trains, whatever. And of course it affects not only your force feedback, which someone could say, oh yeah, all right, I will, you know, lower the force feedback, I won't feel it. Of course you're gonna lose some, some feedback. <laughs> uh, but it also affects the actual handling of, of the car, especially at the rear end, because you don't really want to go over the curb parallelly and having the rear end moving around or possibly, you know, you might not feel it that much, but then you go turning in to, uh, to the turn and you have the rear end stepping out because it was already, you know, moving around and was losing grip already. Look at this. Okay, I guess it's clear. All right, so. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, as usual, everything in the setup is a compromise. Everything is a compromise. So, 
you don't have problem. I mean, you have issues. So, for example, you go into Snetterton on Ulton Park, which are extremely bumpy uh, tracks and have very strange uh, curbs, even higher than than Misano. And if you go over there with full camber, you will feel the car being very um, nervous. It moves around a lot. It doesn't go exactly where you want. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, we can lower the uh, negative camber. Let's go minus 3 and minus 2.8 here. It's still high. Obviously, lowering the negative camber, you're going to lose some lateral grip. Okay, you have to find the compromise. You have to understand uh, what what's going on and how you can improve on that. All right. Uh, but it is possible to to, to compromise. Uh, so let's let's go a little bit lower here just to to show you the the effect, the opposites, right? So you can you can understand what is going on. I wouldn't recommend to go as low as that. Uh, you can feel the difference already by going down to three uh, at the rear, for example. But I want to show you the difference. All right, so now we have again the same car, same setup, same everything, and uh, we don't have as much negative camber as before. All right, so let's see what's going to happen. Pretty much nothing. Something happening, obviously. It's not that it goes away instantly, but it's nothing happens really. It's nothing tragic. Look at this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Look at that. No problems. Just went over the kerbs. This is exactly what happens with your street cars. All the street cars have cambers, even the ones with very wide tires, they have cambers that go up to like minus 0 0.5 degrees. Uh, minus 0 0.1 degree at most, right? Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more at the rear for the front wheel drive cars. Uh, and obviously you feel nothing of this kind of movements into, uh, into the steering wheel, right? But even if you take a street car and you start using, you know, high cambers, negative cambers like minus 3, minus 3.3 I have on my Miata, for example, you start feeling more of this kind of situations. Still not much because obviously the Miata has only 195 uh, wide front tires, so no, not a big deal. But if you put minus three degrees on a car that has 325 millimeters front uh, front tires or rear, for that matter, uh, yes, you're gonna you're gonna feel strange things. So here you have now less camber, nothing moves on my steering wheel. I can go over the curbs with no problems at all. Again. Uh, you might ask, should I use as low camber as possible? Absolutely not. Uh, but sometimes, on some tracks, you need to find the compromise or at least be aware that on some occasions going over the curb like this, if you have lots of camber, it won't be as easy as now, but the car will move around. Not just the, fir the first feedback, but the whole car will move around. Let's have a look of this into the replay. Let's go over the, the tires like that and see how the car moves around. Look at the tires also. How they flex and bend. Look at now. Look how the whole car will move around. See that, that movement that it made. That was the tires trying to follow it. Look at this. Look at, look at how... That, did you show that, guys? Let me show you this one more time, even slower. Now, I want you to watch how the tires try to go up and down on the curb. So, I'm going here, there, and the tires start to go up, then up then, and they move to the opposite. So, it doesn't go normally over the curb. They want to move opposite. They want to follow the tram line, you know. And I didn't do anything on the steering wheel. It did all by itself, the tire, right? So let's move a little bit farther ahead here. Again here, you can see how the tire wants to... You see? The whole car 
doesn't want to go inside. It stays there. Okay. So this is for, for me. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty cool to show. Let's go from the other side here. And the most wonderful thing is now that you can feel it actually on on the steering wheel. Look at this. Look at how the tires try to. Ah, uh, this is cool here. Let me try to go closer if possible. Look at how the tire is following the curb. Did you saw the flex of the tire? Let's go also the next one here. Turning. Look look at how the tires moves around. Did you saw that? Okay, let's go really slow here. Try to see if we can show you. So look at the side goal of the tire. You see how it tries to move around again? And when you go over the curb, it will move away. Boom, like that. Uh, this is all about the, the camber and what it creates and how it works uh, and why you feel what you are feeling right now in, uh, in the first feedback. Uh, it will take some, some time for some of you to get accustomed to this, but it is more realistic, it's, it's more correct this way, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you will like it uh, very, very, very soon. And I also know that some of you already love it, so yeah. Uh, as usual, again, I will say this, uh, trying to get more realistic doesn't always mean making the game more fun. Okay, sometimes, sometimes the game in some condition will result more exciting, because driving is exciting, but also more frustrating. Uh, it will ask for you you, did you saw how the car moved over there? That was really cool. Look at that. Look at the rear end. Look at the rear wing. Look at the rear wing. Focus on the rear wing. You see how the rear wing moved? It had nothing to do with my steering inputs. It did all that because it went over the curb and the rear end didn't want to climb over the curb because of the very high camber. So, sometimes, as I was saying, the game will not be more fun. It will not be more enjoyable, it will not be, even though, you know, it depends on the perspective. So for me, it's more fun and it is more enjoyable because it's more realistic and I love real driving. But for some of you that might not have as much experience from real driving, it might seem that it is more frustrating, so why should I feel that? Uh, but that, that's what simulation is. Simulation is, you know, who cares what the end result if we validated from feedback, telemetry and everything that it is correct. If the end result is more correct, this is the way to go. All right. So this is what is going on.